you what's going on y'all it's j Smo reviews here back at it again with another video man bringing you guys yet another predictions video we are we are in the midst of it uh when it comes to this run of events it started with queen of the ring queen of the ring to black ice black ice to battle academy war ready the people versus politics uh so battle academy obviously throwing their hat in here for the run of events uh and then we have end game next week right so it's never ending but didn't want to give my time to talk about this card because similar to the black ice card um it has a ton of matchups that are some vets some like higher level names versus the roster of the specific league and then you have two like very worthwhile matchups talking about tay rock versus reed and jc versus bill collector obviously that's going to make up a lot of the predictions a lot of the thoughts here and like for those that are buying the card that's going to be one of the main reasons that they do right but as per usual going to go through all matchups and uh, let's start from the bottom of the card so first battle on the card is capo bravado versus bandit montana which is actually a little bit of interclass action from that second top six class from url so like eunice's class and like everyone else within that class they have argued with capo bravado you know he has a ton of back and forth almost every day he has a back and forth with someone uh many obviously being in his class and honestly him and Eunice, you know, kind of, some would argue that's like a, a number one spot in the class type of fight that they've talked up. I liked when him and Dice were going back and forth with the diss tracks. I mean, you'd have to just be following on Twitter to see some of this, but they had like four diss tracks back and forth. Thought that was pretty organic, even though I know they're, they're cool outside of the ring. Um, and then you have this Bandit Montana matchup, which they've been going back and forth a little bit more recently. I will say it's, it's probably the least interesting, in my opinion, of any of those interclass matchups. Just haven't been a big believer in what Bandit has put out as of recent. Obviously, he's much more seasoned and experienced. He's been battling since the grind time days. But if I'm just looking at talent cap right now, I am going to go cap 0-2-1. Uh, like I said, you look at Bandit and Ease recently. Definitely wasn't the biggest fan of that. But he hasn't had, like, the most opportunities recently. When that happens and you don't have a really good read on the guy, if the next performance is great, you could have a whole 180 about how you read him. So, you know, would like to see Bandit do good in this battle, right? But I have this one being a fairly easy win for Capo. Uh, then from there, we have Jay Breed versus Funeral Fame. I have Jay Breed winning that. Uh, might have a little more motivation since he was kind of one of the main spokespeople for the whole brick process. Obviously, doesn't exist anymore. So you see Jay Breed over here. Probably think he's a little better than Funeral Fame as well. Um, then you have Fist to Beast versus Dot. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I first read it, I thought it was... Um, who was homie that battled uh, chess? Misfit the Fire? Something of that, you know, for those that remember it on Verbal Warzone, he went viral and, like, smoked chess on beat. Uh, but it's not him. It's Fist the Beast. I don't know who this is, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, he is battling Dot, though, and I'm not exactly the biggest fan of Dot in terms of competitively winning battles. I shouldn't say a fan. I'm not a believer in terms of him competitively and winning battles, but I am a fan of him. He is an entertainer. He's obviously very entertaining when he gets on stage. And versus a name like this that either is lower level or just genuinely a name I don't know, I will side with that entertainment factor and that more familiarity. Uh, so I have Dot winning that. And then that's when you get into the matchups that are more one of these strong, like top tier vet names versus some of the Battle Academy roster, uh, which is Shotgun Shug versus Shank Prezi. Um, Shank Prezi, clever little, you know, puncher. He beat Miss Hustle in the one rounder uh, on Battle Academy. It, she choked in that battle. Um, he was pretty decent in that, though. And, you know, listen, I got him beating Shug here. And it's not that he's better than Shug or better, you know, when they're applied. But when was the last time you've seen applied Shug specifically on, like, a smaller league, right? I mean, he battled top floor loot on this league. It's, he's actually pretty clean, stumbled a little bit, which he's been doing a lot. But he had short rounds. Even when he's battling down versus Capo Bravado, Hansel, Funeral Fame on OSBL. Like, I'm not... He's... He's in check mode. You know, it's about the ventures that Shug has outside of the ring right now. It's pretty clear if you're following what he's doing. Um, and I just don't know if he'll if he'll even be clean for this. So I have Shank winning in, just thinking that he'll take it more serious. And then you have T-Top versus Top Floor Loot, who we just talked about. And then you have this whole Top Floor gang. Two of them. We're going to talk about news in a second. I look at, like, Top Floor, Loot, Mars, and then News are kind of like the three guys I feel like Battle Academy is trying to push as, like, that front part of the roster. Um, and, and out of all of them, I think Lude has done some of the best work. Like, even though he beat Shug by just simply rapping longer than him, he had moments where his real talk is good. Like, he has some positive qualities. I have, like, T-Top battling down on some of these like smaller leagues though um i loved his work versus jdac guy in kansas city granted it's not a smaller league but his snake eyes matchup isn't one of like one of his more premier matchups of the year that was a great performance his one rounder versus dice good performance so 
it's kind of weird when you see T-Top versus Twerk, Danny, and Official this year. People aren't really liking that material, although he is winning those battles. And then it seems like some of his best material is when he's battling guys you wouldn't expect it for. So I got T-Top 2-1 going into this one, but... Obviously, if he doesn't take it that serious, there, there's a chance that Top Floor is the same thing he did versus Shug, where he just wraps five or six minutes, you know, just kind of drowns it out. But going in, I'll have T-Top for now. Uh, and then you just have the last two real quick before we get to those top two matchups we talked about in the beginning. Rum Nitty versus News. Uh, this should not be a close battle, right? The only thing you have to look at is that Nitty is battling a week after Black Ice. And if there's anyone that's applied to do week to week battles every two weeks, right? Battling high volume, Nitty is like one of the more one of the guys you can count on more in that scenario. However, it's a risk in general to battle that much, right? So the percentage of him choking or stumbling goes up. I don't think he'll have a very good third. If there's anything about Nitty when he's battling this often, the third round is the one that takes the hit. He might have two amazing first rounds like he did versus Black Ice, short third, stumbly third, whatever it is. So um, I, I just I just think that there's a huge gap in talent here. Could be a Nitty showcase, right? But it's on news to do what Killer B did. Have a round where you where like you rise to the occasion and take a round clear. Show fight. Give us something that we can be happy with your material, regardless of what the win or loss looks like. And then you have O Red versus K Walker, which going in, I was almost leaning towards O Red. You've seen less of him recently, but you, you haven't seen any less of the stumbling and choking. I did have him beating Kid Chaos. It was a great performance. Stumbled and choked versus Swervo Red. I thought that cost him the battle there. It's just something you see more from him over the last few years. And it's Kay Walker in Philly who has been improving. You know what I'm saying? A few years ago, I would have told you Kay Walker is one of the easier battlers to beat. You know what I'm saying? It's active, but looking at it, Riggs battle, show off battle. It is a step up in comp, but versus an opponent that has that potential to be stumbly, has the potential to possibly mess it up for himself. I expect Kay Walker to be confident in Philly, and I do have Kay Walker winning going into the battle versus O Red. And then we have those two kind of power matches they have here for the card, right? And the one we're going to talk about now, I think for many, will be the battle of the night pick. For me, it is my, you know, prediction battle of the night pick. And that is JC versus Bill Collector, which is just a, a great match, which has gotten better. I feel like the more you've seen Bill lean into the Devil Bar Bill, right, where he's really more of a pen now than ever in his career, that's what's going to make this matchup the best. And I feel like it started having real noise around when Surf and JC happened, right? And I remember Bill had been asking for that matchup leading up. Obviously, JC's stock was high after winning the tournament. You could have done tournament winner versus tournament winner uh, after Bill won a KOTD. But after the Surf loss, I also remember Bill being like, I won't take that. That's beneath me now. But I actually thought it was one of the best matchups out there for either of them. And I'm finally happy to see that about two years later, they've spun back on it while JC has actually probably looked his best since the Surf loss, right? With the news battle, the Eunice battle, just a really good versus Showstopper, and now you have Bill coming up. He's kind of shaping out to have a decent 2024, I'm not going to lie to you. Whether, you know, no matter how if you call it winner or loser-wise, just his quality. Uh, and then you have Bill, who's looked great this year. And I'm going to tell you what, we're talking about like the best 2024s um, so far. I think Bill's name is someone, people know he's around that convo, but when he gets to the end of the year and you realize the guy's going to have battle in chess, which was a body, as we know. Tay Rock, one of the better battles of the year. Granted, I had him losing. Um, JC, right here. Then he's going to have Ill Will in Michigan. And that's not including Coach Corleone, Clean Paper, some of those complimentary plates. So both of them are in good form coming into the battle. And for many of years, if you asked me about my winner for this battle, I would have told you JC. I just thought that he is flat out a better battle rapper, specifically just pen wise creativity wise the bars that he writes i feel like they were better than bills however you could really say from 2018 bills taking that next step up but even then i thought a lot of his style was still you know half very performative still leaned heavy on the comedy not that he's lost that ability at all but I think bar for bar now, that's his biggest strength. Like, if you look at these battles, he's really hanging with people with that whole kind of chain punching. It's not about just, like, big haymaker leads up. It's, what did I say the other day? I said this about another rapper. It's like a thousand paper cuts. I forgot who I was referring to. But when you just have those like when Shine was in his prime chaining punches, if you just write down each bar, it's not like each one is the most creative one ever said, but it just keeps adding up back to back to back. He's building the momentum, the rapping ability, which is also a strong part of why Bill's been doing so good. He's just able to build that next level of momentum all the way through the round. And that's why I am gonna go Bill 2-1. I also would say in Bill's last few Battle Academy performances, 
did very good results. The Rosenberg battle's going back a little bit, and while it wasn't the greatest battle, it was a big grudge match, and I thought that Bill was clearly better than Rosenberg. And then his chess material is his best material this year. Also on Battle Academy, he's fantastic, entertaining, haymakers. He was surgical with the angles. So I'm expecting that kind of all-around approach here, and I'm going Bill 2-1 edge. Now, JC wins, like I said, He's been looking like he's trending more in that right direction recently, and for many years, I would have told you that JC is going to win this battle, but I'm just that impressed with some of the uh, the output from Bill Collector, and I think it'll be a debatable battle. Don't think this will be a clear one, but I am going with Bill going in, and that leaves you with the main event, which is Tay Rock versus Reed Dallas, and in the career of Tay Rock, who's battled pretty much every legend, every region, he's finally, I mean, I wouldn't say finally checking off, you know, but going to King of the Dot, having the big K battle. I felt like for a long time, that was like the biggest one out there um, that hadn't gotten done. And even calling out a few more people, franchise, Ilmac over there to add, you know what I'm saying, to that, that whole part of his resume. Then the URL part of his resume is obviously filled out. He's battling a lot of the up and comers, all these legends and different names, but Reed was the one that just escaped. uh, And he had mentioned over and over and over again, and it's probably one of the best stylistic matchups left. They're going to be aggressive. There's going to be some grittiness to it, um, even though I know there's obviously mutual respect. And on the flip side, Reed, who's been here so much longer and obviously doesn't have th- as filled of a resume, even for the, the crazy legend he is, you know, Golden Era guys never have those like super filled in resumes for the most part. Um, However, he's got more and more as the years have went on. Ill Will, Rum Nitty, and he said, Rock and Geechee, that's who I really want before I'm out of here. So with that being said, shouldn't you expect both of them to give like great versions of each other? They have been calling each other out for a few years now. Reed was talking greasy on Champion, talking about, you know, Rock's got a good run, you know, but every run's got to come to an end. They're worried about repping this. Why, why isn't he repping Baltimore? Kind of like giving out the angles early. So I'm actually confident you get a very good read in this battle contrary to some of the ones you've seen recently i know it can be real hit or miss calico battles terrible true foe battles terrible right but then through the years he gives you gems like the nitty win like the ill will win in my opinion more of a debatable battle but in my opinion he beat ill will uh, the swamp one rounder like when he has a certain level of respect for the guy across from him the situation if it's in the right like uh right situation At any time, you could get a great read, no matter how inconsistent he is. It's in Philly. He's been asking for Rock. Like anyone that battles Rocks, I'm sure he's going to have some fresh angles of his own, but the topics write themselves, so expect a very good read, Dallas. However... This is Tay Rock in 2024. What he's been doing is great, and there's just so many aspects he's still better at. He is the more performative. It's going to be smaller room in Philly, so maybe the, the difference in delivery won't matter as much. I love Reed's signature delivery, but the rapping ability, you know what I'm saying? And even as great as Reed is, that is what Rock is all about right now. The haymaker ability, the punch count. He's just too informed and, and too respected for me to go against him in this scenario, so I have Rock 2-1, but I do not think it's impossible... And I wouldn't be all that shocked if Reed shocks some people and makes this debatable or even wins the battle. And that is, you know, kind of my very quick, very to-the-point thoughts here for the Battle Academy card. Um, I'm not expecting it to be the craziest one, I want to say. And and there's good events this year that have had tons of battles as well, right? I I like Black Ice's event, Massacre 6's event of the year right now, and they had two days worth of battles. However... It is going to get very tiring weekend after weekend after weekend if we keep having eight battle cards. I'm just saying, I love what Power Moves is doing, and I'm hoping next year we could see a little bit back to five or six battle cards because we know it's probably going to run a little long. There's going to be some delay. Someone's not going to show up to the venue on time. It's just the logistics of battle rap. Um, And when you have eight to nine battles, it just can carry out the runtime so long, and that has definitely happened with Battle Academy events on a few occasions. So, a little worried expecting that runtime right now. Um, but besides that, you know, still a good card on paper. JC versus Bill, Tay Rock versus Reed. It, it means something to some very important battlers when you look at the years of a, a Rock, a Bill, and even to a lesser degree, a, a JC who might be starting to compete in that top 20 kind of region, right? You could throw his name in there, especially if he does great versus Bill. So there is important battle rap there. And then you wait to see what the showcases are. Are any of these Battle Academy talents going to seize that opportunity and do something with it? Or do we get a showcase some, from some of our favorites like a T-Top, a Nitty, etc.? But With all that being said, I want to hear your guys' opinions in the comment section down below. 
Uh, obviously, any thoughts on Tay Rock and Reed and JC and Bill? How are you calling it? Which one do you think battle the night? Any hot takes? And then anything for the rest of the card? People you might believe in to show out? Maybe a dark horse for a performance that nobody's expecting? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to debate it, man. But it's been J Smo Reviews again here, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'm going to catch you on the next one, man.